Hi everyone, I'm Dong Woo Kim and I'll talk about flexible and efficient verifiable computation on encrypted data. This is a joint work with Alexander Boyd, Ignacio Cascudo, and Dario Fiore. Let me start with the motivation of our work. The motivation is an outsourced computation where a client outsources its data and computation to a server. Then the server gets back the result. In this case, we can think about two security concerns of the client. The first one is a data privacy that the client doesn't want to expose its data. The second one is computation integrity that the client wants to be guaranteed that the result is correct. Our goal is to provide a solution to these problems with an efficiency. Here, efficiency means that the computation the storage and the communication usage in this protocol should be as small as possible. On data privacy, fully home encryption can be a great solution. With home encryption, one can compute any function on encrypted data without decrypting it. If a client outsources its data which is encrypted with home encryption, the client can't get the result without exposing the data to anyone. Following Gentry's blueprint, many work have improved the efficiency of home encryption and most schemes are usable in practice. We remark that client is efficient since it only performs encryption and decryption, while a server's computational burden has been improved. On computation integrity, verifiable computation can be a good solution. In verifiable computation, a server provides a proof for the computation and a client can verify the result with it. There has been many work on VC and now we can see that they are used in practice as SNARKs. On efficiency of this solution, the verification is usually efficient independent of the computation and server's burden has been improved. Then, what is a solution for both privacy and integrity? There are only a few work on this, and only FGP14 provides a solution with efficient instantiation. The, the solution of FGP14 is to outsource the computation with fully home encryption, then verify the fully home encryption computation with verifiable computation. This can be a quite simple solution, but the problem is to design an efficient VC for the fully home encryption computation. Only a few work provide a solution to this, and our main contribution is to provide a solution to this problem. More precisely, we can compare the previous work with ours as follows as a VC on FHG. At first, our solution can verify FHG with any self text modulus while the previous one work only with prime modules of size bigger than, for example, 256-bit for 128-bit security. It enables more flexible choice of FHE parameters and gives more efficient usage of FHE. We also generalized the previous solution so that we can verify non-deterministic computation on encrypted data. Technically, the main point is the introduction of our new home of hash, fun hash functions, which will be explained later. We also adapted GKR protocol over rings to verify the FHG computation, and also provided a model for VC on encrypted data for non-deterministic computation. Now, we will talk about the basic syntax and generic scheme. At first, Verifiable computation is composed of four algorithms and the pre-processing algorithm generates a CRS for a function f and verification algorithm verify the computation result with the proof generated from the proof algorithm. VC satisfies correctness, soundness and succinctness property. The soundness says that an adversary cannot pass the verification with an incorrect result while succinctness says that the proof size is small and verification is faster than computing the function f. 
The HOMF encryption is composed of four algorithms called KGN, Encryption, Eval, and Decryption. The correct correctness property ensures that the computation on ciphertext is homomorphically preserved to the computation on the message. And the ciphertext also satisfies the user, user in the CPA security. Now we can introduce the generic scheme of FGP14 which describes the VFF computation on encrypted data. The generic scheme is composed of setup, keygen, problem gen, compute, verify, and decode the algorithm. And it actually describes the scheme at the figure on the right side, which verifies the FH computation with VC. We can see that this generic scheme constructed from VC and FH satisfies the required properties such as privacy, integrity, associability from the properties of VC and FHE. Here, the main problem is that VC for FHE computation can be efficient. Let me explain a bit more about the efficiency of VC on Hof encryption computation. Usually in Hof encryption, the ciphertext is much bigger than the plain text. And computation on ciphertext is also much heavier than those on the plain text. For example, in BV home encryption scheme, ciphertext operation is at least d times bigger than those on the plain text, and this d can be 2 to the 11 or 15. Therefore, if we apply VC on home encryption directly, it is also that d times costly than VC on plain text, and it makes the overall VC scheme on encrypted data not efficient for practical use. Therefore, it is inevitable to design an efficient VC for home of encryption computation for FCMC. A solution to this problem is to apply VC on the image of home of cache on the HE computation. Here, the home of cache is a ring homomorphism which preserves the ciphertext addition and multiplication, and the range of home of cache written as DH can be much smaller than the domain, the ciphertext space. Therefore, VC on this image can be much more efficient than that on the ciphertext. Since this hash is homomorphic, if the result is correct, then the homomorphic image is also verified to be correct. However, an adversary can send the wrong result, which has the same image under this hash as the correct result. To prevent this, a verifier samples a hash from family of hashes which satisfies on an epsilon universal property. This property guarantees that if two side texts are different, their images under the hash are also different with high probability, given that the hash is uniformly sampled from the family of hashes. With the previous idea on a homomorphic cache, we can describe our VC on encrypted data. This was also implicitly exploited in the previous work. After approval or a server gives back the result, a verifier or a client samples a hash from the family of hashes, then sends it to the prover. Then, the prover provides a proof on this image of hash on the ciphertext computation. Finally, the verifier can verify this image, then confirms that the result is correct or not according to this verification. We can see that given that the hash is sampled from epsilon universal hash family, the success probability of an adversary in cheating is less than the epsilon. Also, the cost of VC can be reduced significantly and we checked it with our instantiation which will be explained later. We also remarked that the interaction between verifier and prover can be made to be non-interactive with via Xiaomi heuristic. Now, let me introduce the instantiation of our VC scheme on encrypted data. For home of encryption, we can use BV home of encryption, and for verifier computation, we can use GKR protocol. Our main contribution, a construction of home of cache, will be mainly explained. At first, let's record the BV home encryption scheme briefly. Let capital Phi be a cyclotomic polynomial and 
let r sub t or r sub q be a polynomial ring mode t or mode q quotiented by phi. We will focus on the ciphertext space, which is composed of polynomials in y with coefficient from r q. Then the ciphertext addition and multiplications are just the addition and multiplications on this polynomial ring, which is equivalent to the zq xy mod phi. Also, we assume that mod phi will be done later. Then we can regard the ciphertext space as simply zq xy, and in other words, a two-variate polynomial on zq. Therefore, when we consider the homomorphic hash. The domain of hash is simply this zq xy. Finally, we recall that in this homomorphic encryption, to compute function f with more multiplicative depth, the size of q must be increased for correctness, and the degree of phi must be increased for security. Now, let me introduce our homomorphic hash on the ciphertext space zq xy. As I told, we can simply consider the function f hat on this space zqxy, and the f hat is composed of addition and multiplication on this space. Then, what can be a homomorphic hash on this space? In the previous work, one used an evaluation map which outputs an evaluation of constants alpha and beta on the input polynomial cxy. This is simple and useful but it works only when the ciphertext modulus q is prime. In our work, we generalized the previous work and proposed a homomorphic cache which also works on the ciphertext modulus with q a power of prime. In fact, our homomorphic cache is a generalization of the previous evaluation map. For an input polynomial cxy, we substitute y with a polynomial rx in x then modularly reduce the polynomial with another polynomial hx. Then, we can see that the previous evaluation map corresponds to the case with rx equal to beta and hx equal to x minus alpha. We can easily say that this hash is homomorphic. However, determining where the, when this hash family can be absolutely universal is more complicated. To give a solution, we need some facts on the Galois ring and Schwarz dilemma. At first, recall that a Galois field is an extension field which is a zq polynomial quotiented by an irreducible polynomial hx, where q is a prime. The Galois ring is an analog of this Galois field when you consider the z sub p to the power instead of zq. Recall that a Schwarz z lemma states that a non-zero polynomial of degree d can have has at most d zeros in a subset A with some property. With this, one can show the absolute universality of the hashes when q is prime, since it is in fact equivalent to the statement that every non-zero polynomial will not be evaluated to be zero with high probability. To show the absolute universality in our case with power of prime modulus, the same argument can be used. However, the problem is that the size of A in the finite ring is quite small. Therefore, we split the Galois ring which has enough size of the set A. Then, with this, we can show that the absolute universality with negligible absolute. Now, let me describe our home hash on z, p to the e, x, y. For our hash to be epsilon universal, we sample hx from irreducible polynomials, then the intermediate ring z, p to the e, x, quotiented by hx is a Galois ring. Then, we sample rx from the set A of this Galois ring. Then, with the short step lemma on this Galois ring, we can show the epsilon universality. In fact, this is just an overview and I recommend to see our paper for detailed proof. Here, we remark that there are plenty number of R hx and rx on all prime p if we increase the degree of hx. Therefore, we can set our homomorphic cache to satisfy absolute universality with negligible absolute. Note that the degree of h is not very large 
it can be similar to or less than the security parameter lambda. One important and interesting detail is that we need to provide a public query sampling process for the irreducible polynomial HX. This can be done by simple rejection sampling, where one samples a random polynomial then checks if it is reducible. In our work, we also provide more efficient sampling process for H, which uses much less random coins than the naive method. With this, the sampling of home of cache can also be made to be non-interactive with Fiat-Shami heuristic. Finally, we can see that our home of cache is good, except that the range of the hash is circular ring. Since we have to prove and verify the image of hash, we have to provide a, a verify computation that works on this scalar ring. For this, we propose to adapt the GKL protocol on the Galois ring as our VC on this Galois ring. At first, recall that a GKL protocol, which is introduced by Goldwasser, Carly, and Rapdrom, is a kind of verified computation called an interactive proof. With this protocol, with interactions between verifier and prover, they can prove and verify the evaluation of ZP arithmetic circuit or computation composed of addition and multiplication on the finite field. The protocol can be made to be non-interactive with Fiat-Shami heuristic. Uh, the, original, the original protocol does not use any crypto cryptographic schemes and its soundness only depends on the schwarz triple lemma on the finite field or ZP. Therefore, one can naturally think of this GKL protocol working over the Galois ring, since the short sleep lemma also holds in the Galois ring. The protocol description is almost the same as the original one, and the only difference is that every element is from the, the Galois ring instead of the ZP or the final field. Then, with this protocol over Galois ring, one can directly prove and verify the computations over the Galois ring. I also remark, remark that the degree of H or the degree of Galois ring can be set similarly as the case of home of cache to make the soundest probability negligible. Finally, I can give the summary of our instantiation of VC on encrypted data. A verifier sends BV size text and a computation function to the prover, then the prover gives back the result. Here, Note that the ciphertext and the result is regarded as two varied polynomials of our integer's modular prime power by delaying the modular deduction by phi to the end. Then, a verifier samples our home of cache, which transforms the above ciphertext and computations to the elements and computations of a Galois ring. In response, the prover sends a proof on this Galois ring with the GKL protocol on this ring then the verifier can verify the result. Finally, the verifier gets the result by computing modulo phi, then decrypting it, the ciphertext. Then, finally, the degree of edge can be set according to the security parameter lambda. Now, I'll give the performance of our VC on encrypted data. Recall that our, our VC on encrypted encrypted data runs as the above figure, then we can see that the time complexity of the verifier and approver are composed of hash evaluation and cost per verifier computation on the range dh of the hash. For more concrete analysis, we can consider the instantiation with a function f, whose degree is capital D and number of additions and multiplications are s. Then, assuming that we used our home of cache and GKL protocol over Galois ring, the cost of verifier and prover measured by the number of ZQ operations can be summarized as these equations. I note that since modulo phi is delayed to the n, the cost accompanies a term quadratic in D, while the original BV encryption would give a term linear in D. Still, the time complexity for prover can be even less than the time complexity for homomorphic computation, which shows that our scheme is quite efficient. 
We can also see the performance of our VC more concretely with an example circuit. We can think of two example circuits which compute an inner product of two vectors or which compute, compute the parallel evaluation of a polynomial on multiple input. The parameters for our scheme is given in the table. Let zq x quotiented by phi be the ciphertext space and let zqx quotiented by h be the range of home of cache. The performance improvement can be estimated by comparing the degree phi to the degree dh of h. The range of hash is about 15 to 200, 400, uh, 240 times smaller than the ciphertext space, and therefore our VC is at least that times faster than applying user VC directly on the ciphertext space without hash. If one uses the previous work, FNP20, the problem is that we must take log q to be bigger than 250. And hence, the degree of phi of the FHE must be bigger than 2 to the 14. Which means that we have to use less efficient fully home encryption parameters, even though it is not required for the FHE computation. I finally mentioned that this parameter assumes the worst case where the prime p is 2. And if prime p is bigger than 2, the degree dh can be much smaller and our vc can be more efficient as well. Finally, I will give a short overview on our vc scheme for non-deterministic computation and context tidying. Non-deterministic computations means a computation where a prover can enter its additional input. And context tidying means that the decryption of ciphertext does not leak additional information than the message it has. Non-deterministic computation and context tidying property allows the version encrypted data to be used in more diverse cases. For example, we can think of the case where a party prepares and encrypts the data and the party decrypted results are different. We provide, we provide a model for VC on encrypted data with home of cache that comprises the non-determinist computations. Roughly, this was done by generalizing the previous work, FMP20, that performed noise flooding by using public-sized encryptions of zero. Then we also combined this with home of cache. I will refer to the paper for the detail. Finally, I will end this talk proposing some open problems. At first, it will be good if one can provide an efficient common and proof argument for home of cache evaluation, or more generally, computations over a Galois ring. In our paper, we only provided a generic VC scheme for a non deterministic computation with our home of cache, and an efficient instantiation of this scheme will be possible with an instantiation of those argument systems. As second, our instantiation uses BV encryption scheme, but this home encryption scheme is not very efficient as the current level home encryption schemes. The problem is that our VC should support other operations than addition and multiplication, to come up with those leveled home of encryption schemes. It will be very interesting if one can propose an efficient VC schemes with such ability. Finally, we expect that our VC scheme is still very efficient for limited use cases, and it will be fascinating if one can find a good application. Thank you very much.